Okay, let's get back to the questions. Okay, what artist, singer, band do you like the best? Oh, Glenn, the list would be endless. You know, when it comes to, to songs and songwriting and performing, I value intelligent lyrics, meaningful contact, great melody, authentic performances. And there are so many writers and performers that come to mind that, that I love. I mean, Willie Nelson, Hank Williams, The Beatles, Neil Young, Marvin Gaye, Carole King, Bonnie Rayet. Oh, man, Frank Sinatra, what a phraser. Uh, the Eagles, John Prine, Lyle Lovett, B.B. King. I mean, stop me, Glenn. I'll go on all night. Right. I feel the same way. My list would be endless also. No, you can keep going. Just kidding. Okay, great. Mike, I've heard your great songs and your music. How do you do the music and the recordings? Musically, I play all the actual instruments myself. Usually, I'll do rhythm on either tenor guitar or baritone ukulele. I'll lay in some bass with a bass ukulele or a baritone banjola to get some bottom end in the recordings. I use kind of a percussive strum technique when I strum to get a drum effect, and sometimes I'll add other percussion like bongos or tambourine to round out a song. For the recordings, I'm really just starting to learn the dark art of recording and mixing, and I'm not anywhere near where I'd really like to be yet. I use a multi-track digital deck for recording. Sometimes I use dynamic mics. Sometimes I use condenser mics. I do the mixing on the recording deck right now, but I'm transitioning to a computer-based mixing program. Okay, great. I love your answers. This is wonderful. Okay. What is the very first song that you recorded? I wrote a song last year called On Mobile Bay. It's about a terrible sailing tragedy we had here on the Gulf Coast. There's an annual sailing race here, the Dauphin Island Race, and last year a huge storm came in during the race. Dozens of boats damaged, dozens of sailors injured, three boats sank, and tragically, six sailors drowned. Now, I've sailed in that race in the past. A lot of my friends were racing last year when the storm hit. One of the boats that went down belongs to a very close friend of mine. He and his crew members spent 90 minutes in the water waiting to get rescued. I mean, all of this was very moving to me, so I wrote a contemporary folk song. It's in the style of an Irish ballad to honor the sailors that were lost, the families of the victims, and all the people that were involved in the rescue and recovery efforts. It's the first song that I recorded and put up on my YouTube channel, and it still leads the pack in the number of views for me on YouTube. Oh, my. I read about that tragedy. It was so awful. And I'm so happy you were okay, and it's great to honor the sailors that were lost and the families, too. That's wonderful that you did that, okay? Mike, of your songs, which one are you the proudest of? Which one do you like the most? <laughs> well, usually my favorite song is the latest one that I've just written. Uh, I'd have to say that I've written several songs that I'm pretty happy with. I, I have a few with a social conscience type of theme, uh, things like making responsible choices, choosing good over evil. I'm pretty happy with some of those. Some of them are blues songs. Some of them are gospel. I've written several blues songs that I think are pretty true to the traditional blues form, but at the same time do a little bit more storytelling than a traditional blues might. Uh, I've got a couple of love songs that I wrote for my wife that I'm pretty happy with. Now, interestingly, some of the songs I like the most don't necessarily resonate with audiences. And at the same time, there are some that I didn't really think were going to be on my greatest hits list that, that really do seem to, to resonate when I play them live. Uh, one of my more recent songs kind of falls into that category. I wanted to write an idealized story of the end of a relationship. I mean, if a relationship has got to end the way we'd like it to, with kind of good feelings and yet that bittersweet quality to it. There's quite a bit of autobiography in it, at least from the way I wish things could have been at some points in my life, and kind of a wistful quality to it. I think maybe that's part of the reason that it works so well. It's called I Still Love You. Right, the latest one you wrote. It's really hard to pick your favorite, but I still like to ask these questions because I... I really would like to know how they feel, okay? What brought you into the music business? I really kind of backed into the music business. I started writing songs for me because it was fun. 
Then I played a few songs I had written for some of my friends, and they really encouraged me to get out and play in some of the local open mics. So that led me into performing and now recording. Glenn, frankly, my biggest amount of airplay has been right here on your show, and I'm really appreciative of that. Well, you're very welcome to put as many of your songs that you'd like to on either one of my posts. I'm very happy to help, and I'm very happy to have you there, okay? Do you play live anywhere, and if so, where do you play? We have a very vibrant music scene down here on the Alabama Gulf Coast. I play open mics in two local songwriting organizations, all original material, and I've started playing some charity events and festivals and other events like that. Well, actually, your songs are a lot better than what you think they are. They're really great. Okay, do you have a CD or a record out? Well, no CD yet. I've still got to figure out that recording and mixing process. I've been putting some recordings up on my YouTube channel. Some of them are me performing songs live and others are multi-track recordings. I am working on a recording project right now. It's taking some religious poems that my grandfather wrote and using them as the basis for gospel songs. Down the road, I'd kind of like to do a concept album that tells the story of of a relationship from beginning to end. I'm thinking it probably would be blues songs. Okay, great. If you could have one dream to come true in the music business, what would it be? I'd really like to write a song that has some real social meaning to it. You know, something along the lines of songs that were written by people like Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger and Bob Dylan. Something with some real social significance. I've got a theory of life that there's really both good and evil in the world, and if we want good to prevail, we've got to choose to do good or choose not to do evil. And I lay that alongside personal responsibility. I think that's pretty important. We've got to make choices and live up to the choices that we've made and face up to the consequences of what we do. I tend to keep coming back to those themes in my writing I'm hoping that someday I'll really lay something down that that lives up to some of those ideals. Right, you're right. To do good and not to do evil and things are the most important. Okay, where do you hope to go with your music? I'd like to have some recognition as a songwriter. You know, maybe an established artist who records one of my songs. Maybe some recognition as a performer in some of the local educational and charitable things that I'm doing now. And, of course, I wouldn't turn down a zillion dollars in royalties if it came my way. But I really think my real goal is to produce a song or or even a body of work that has some lasting social significance to it, something that has some real meaning. Yes, that would be great, is to produce a song that has some real meaning to it. And uh, for me, just if I could just have one person that was interested in just one of my songs, that would be wonderful. Okay. Mark, is it important to get a contract? Or are you happy writing and playing? I don't think of myself as a performer so much as as a songwriter. So I'm really not looking for a contract as a performing or a recording artist. I would love to hear what an established artist with some real soul could do with one of my songs. But a lot of what I write, I'm writing just for myself. And I get a real sense of accomplishment when I come up with a good hook or a turn of phrase or when I can really put together a three- or four-minute song that tells a compelling story. Performing-wise, I mean, it's a real kick when I play one of my songs in an open mic and the audience gets real quiet because they're really listening to what the song is saying to them. I've had that happen a few times, and that's when I really feel like a songwriter. Yes, right, for yourself. But to have a great artist to do one of your songs, that would be so wonderful. And yes, to have people like your songs, and for me... That would be the big thrill right there. Okay, let's stop here and play another one of Mike's songs. Get up in the morning, I'm already late. Won't get a head start, but can get out the gate, marking time. Mm-hmm, marking time. But get back to the grind, I'm already behind, marking time. I slave at my job, I can't get nothing done. Try to please the boss, but he ain't having none, marking time. 
mm-hmm, walking time. Work day after day, success won't come my way, mocking time. I seek fame and fortune, I freely confess. The more I put in, I just come out with less. Want to hang with the big dogs, but I'm way off the pace. Want to break from the pack, but I'm running in place, mocking time. Mm-hmm, 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 mocking time. I want a bright future, but I'm stuck in the past. I'm racing with rats and I'm coming in last. Life's moving on, afraid I'm passing my prime. I don't want to find that I'm just mocking time. Drag home every night, I can't tell now from there. Get up in the morning, do all over again, mocking time. Mm-hmm, mocking time. Well, I can't get ahead, just sink deeper in red, mocking time. Yeah, I try and I try, but the days slip on by, mocking time. Well, I don't want to find that I've spent my whole life mocking time. Mm-hmm, mocking time. Mm-hmm, mocking time. Mm-hmm, mocking time. I really love your music. This is really wonderful, and I'm I'm excited that I get to hear it here on my station, and that's great, and be able to play it for the fans and the listeners out there. Okay, Mike, it's been wonderful having you here, and I hope that you'll come back again. Thanks so much for having me, Glenn, and thanks for everything you're doing to promote indie songwriters and artists. You do a great show. I enjoy listening to it, and I'm looking forward to listening to it for a long time. Okay, thanks a lot, Mike. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for today with Just Plain Talking with Glenn. But I hope you listen in to Hearts of Country Radio right here in the heart of Texas. And I wish you all a good day. Until later, bye-bye.